Grade 8, Quiz 16. Directions. Read the passage below and answer the questions that follow. Excerpt from the given day by Dennis Lehan. Paragraph 1. Captain Thomas Coughlin opened the door to his study and gave Luther a wide, warm smile. You must be Mr. Lawrence. Yes, sir, Captain Coughlin. Nora, that will be all for now. Yes, sir, the Irish girl Luther just met said. Nice to meet, meet you, Mr. Lawrence. You too, Miss O'Shea. She bowed and took her leave. Come in, come in, Captain Coughlin swung the door wide and Luther entered a study that smelled of good tobacco. A recent fire in the hearth in the dying autumn. Captain Coughlin led him to a leather chair and went around the other side of a large mahogany desk and took his seat by the window. Isaiah Gitteru said, you're from Ohio. Yes, sir. I heard you say, sir. Sir? Just a moment ago, when we met, his light blue eyes glittered. You said, sir, not sir. Which will it be, son? Which do you prefer, Captain? Captain Coughlin waved an unlit cigar at the question. Whichever makes you comfortable, Mr. Lawrence. Yes, sir. Another smile. This one not so much warm as self-satisfied. Columbus, correct? Yes, sir. And what did you do there? I worked for the Anderson Arm Immense Corporation, sir. And before that? I did carpentry, sir. Some masonry work, piping, you name it. Captain Coughlin leaned back in his chair and propped his feet on the desk. He lit his cigar and started through stared through the flame and the smoke at Luther until the tip was fat with red. You've never worked in a household, however. No, sir, I have not. Captain Coughlin leaned his head back and blew smoke rings at the ceiling. Paragraph 26. Luther said, but I'm a fast learner, sir, and there's nothing I can't fix, and I look right smart, too, in tails and white gloves. Captain Coughlin chuckled, a sense of wit. Bully for you, son, indeed. He ran a hand over the back of his head. It's not a full-time position that's being offered, nor do I offer any lodging. I understand, sir. You would work roughly 40 hours a week, and most of it would be driving Mrs. Coughlin to mass, cleaning, maintenance, and the serving of meals. Do you cook? I can, sir. Not a bother. Nora will do most of that. Captain Coughlin gave another wave of his cigar. She's the last you just met. She lives with us. She does chores as well, but she's gone most of the day working at a factory. You'll meet Mrs. Coughlin soon, he said, and his eyes glittered again. I may be the head of the household, but God will was remiss in telling her. You follow my meaning? Anything she asks, you hop too. Yes, sir. Stay on the east side of the neighborhood. Sir? Captain Coughlin brought his feet off the desk. The east side, Mr. Lawrence, the west side is fairly infamous for its tolerance of colors. Yes, sir. Word will get out, of course, that you work for me, and that's fair warning, sure, to most ruffians, even west siders, but you can never be too careful. Thank you for the advice, sir. The captain's eyes fell on him through the smoke again. This time, they were part of the smoke, swirling in it, swimming around Luther, looking into his eyes, his heart, his soul. Luther had seen hints of this ability in cops before. They didn't call them copper's eyes for nothing, but Captain Coughlin's gaze achieved a level of invasion Luther had never come across in a man before. Hope to never come across twice. Who taught you to read, Luther? The captain's voice was soft. A Mrs. Murtray, sir? Hamilton School, just outside of Columbus. What else she teach you, sir? What else, Luther? Captain Coffin took another slow drag from his cigar. I don't understand the question, sir. What else? The captain said for a third time. Sir, I'm not following. Paragraph 48. Grew up poor, I imagine. The captain leaned forward ever so slightly, and Luther resisted the urge to push his chair back. Luther nodded, yes, sir. Sharecropping? Not so much, sir. My mother and father, though, yeah. Captain Coughlin nodded, his lips pursed in pain, 
was born into nothing himself. A two-room thatched hut we shared with flies and field rats, it was. No place to be a child. Certainly no place to be an intelligent child. You know what an intelligent child learns in those circumstances, Mr. Lawrence? No, sir. Yes, you do, son. Captain Coughlin smiled a third time since Luther had met him. This smile snaked into the air like the captain's gaze encircled. Don't muck about with me, son. I'm just not sure what kind of ground I'm standing on, sir. Captain Coughlin gave that a cock of his head and then a nod. An intelligent child born to less than advantage sur surroundings, Luther, learns to charm. He reached across the desk. His fingers twirled through the smoke. He learns to hide behind that charm so that no one ever sees what he's really thinking or feeling. He went to decanter behind his desk and poured two helpings of amber liquid into crystal, crystal scotch glasses. He brought the drinks around the desk and handed one to Luther, the first time Luther ever been handed a glass by a white man. I'm going to hire you, Luther, because you intrigue me. The captain sat on the edge of the desk and clinked his glasses off Luther's. He reached behind him and came back with an envelope. He handed it to Luther. Avery Wallace left that for whoever replaced him. You'll note its seal has not been tampered with. Luther saw a maroon wax seal on the back of the envelope. He turned it over and saw that it was addressed to my replacement from Avery Wallace. Luther took a drink of scotch, as good as he'd ever tasted. Thank you, sir. Captain Coughlin nodded. I respected Avery's privacy. I'll respect yours. But don't ever think I don't know you, son. I know you like I know the mirror. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, what? Yes, sir, you know me. And what do I know? That I'm smarter than I let on. The captain said, and what else? Luther met his eyes. I'm not as smart as you. A fourth smile. Cocked up the right side and certain another clink of the glasses welcome to my home luther lawrence paragraph 70 luther read the note from avery wallace on the streetcar back to the get a ruse to my replacement if you are reading this i'm dead if you are reading this you are also negro as was i because the white folk in k l and m streets only hire negro house men the coughlin family is not so bad for white folk the captain is never to be trifled with, but he will treat you fair if you don't cross him. His son's immersely good. Mr. Connor will snap at you every now and again. Joe is just a boy and will talk your ear off if you let him. Denny, Danny is a strange. He definitely does his own thinking. He is like the captain, though. He will treat you fair and like a man. Nor is a funny thinker herself but there is not any wool over her eyes. You can trust her. Be careful with Mrs. Coughlin. Do what she asks and never question her. Stay well clear of the captain's friend, Lieutenant McKenna. He is something the Lord should have dropped. Good luck. Sincerely, Avery Wallace. Luther looked up from the letter as the streetcar crossed the Broadway Bridge while the Fort Point Channel ran silver and sluggish below. So this was his new life. So this was his new city. One, paragraph one through seven. What tone characterizes the dialogue among the three characters? A, weary. B, polite. C, playful. D, suspicious. I'm going back to paragraphs one through seven to read. Paragraph one. Captain Thomas Coughlin opened the door to his study and gave Luther a wide, warm smile. You must be Mr. Lawrence. Yes, sir. Captain Coughlin. Nora, that will be all for now. Yes, sir. The Irish girl Luther just met said, Nice to meet you, Mr. Lawrence. You too, Miss O'Shea. She bowed and took her leave. In paragraphs 1 through 7, what tone characterizes the dialogue among the three characters? A. Weary. B. Polite. C. Playful. D. Suspicious. Number 2. What is the most likely purpose of Captain Coughlin's behavior in paragraph 23 through 24? A. To suggest that Luther should relax. B. To suggest that Luther should leave the room. C. To show that Captain Coughlin is a generous boss. 
D to show that Captain Coughlin is in control of the meeting. Going back to paragraphs 23 to 25. 23. Captain Coughlin leaned back in his chair and propped his feet on the desk. He lit a cigar and stared through the flame and the smoke uh, at Luther until the tip was fat with red. You never worked in a household, however. No, sir, I have not. Captain Coughlin leaned his head back and blew smoke rings at the ceiling. Question two. What is the most likely purpose of Captain Coughlin's behavior in paragraphs 23 through 25? To suggest that Luther should relax, to suggest that Luther should re leave the room, to show that Captain Coughlin is a generous boss, to show that Captain Coughlin is in control of the meeting. Number three, what is the main effect of Captain Coughlin's actions in paragraph 39? A, <clears throat> a they make Luther feel sleepy. B, they make Luther feel less afraid. C, they make the interview pass quickly. D, they make the interview more intense. Going back to paragraph 39. The captain's eyes fell on him through the smoke again. This time they were part of the smoke, swirling in it, swimming around Luther, looking into his eyes, his heart, his soul. Luther had seen hints of this ability in cops before. They didn't call them copper's eyes for nothing. But Captain Coughlin's gaze achieved a level of invasion Luther had never come across in a man before, hoped to never come across twice. Question 3. What is the main effect of Captain Coughlin's actions in paragraph 39? A. They make Luther feel sleepy. B. They make Luther feel less afraid. C. They make the interview pass quickly. D. They make the interview more intense. Four, read the sentence from paragraph 56 in the box below. He brought the drinks around the desk and handed one to Luther. The first time Luther had ever been handed a glass by a white man. What does the sentence mainly show about Captain Coughlin? A, he is puzzled by social customs. B, he is teaching Luther bad habits. C, he is eager to finish the interview. D, he is treating Luther with courtesy. Number five, in paragraph 57, what is the most likely reason Captain Coughlin tells Luther the letter's seal has not been tampered with? A, to appear trustworthy. B, to show that he liked Avery Wallace. C, so the letter will be read by others. D, so Luther will read the letter immediately. Going back to paragraph 57, I'm going to hire you, Luther, because you intrigued me. The captain sat on the edge of the desk and clinked his glass off Luther's. He reached behind him and came back with the envelope. He handed it to Luther. Avery Wallace left that for whoever replaced him. You'll note its seal has not been tampered with. Question 5. In paragraph 57, what is the most likely reason Captain Coughlin tells Luther the letter's seal has not been tampered with? A. To appear trustworthy. B, to show that he liked Avery Wallace. C, so the letter will be read by others. D, so Luther will read the letter immediately. Six, explain what the interaction between Luther and Captain Coughlin reveals about each of them. Use two details from the text to support your response.